Jesus, my God, he's so good. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord God. We praise you this morning, Lord God. We yes, praise you. Worthy. We give you glory, Lord God. Help us come in here with a, with a heart of thanksgiving, yes. a heart of prayer, a heart of just lifting you up, Lord God. Let us leave everything at home, leave all our problems at home, Lord God, and let us come to you, laying down at your feet, and let us come to you praising you for who you are. You are God, our Savior. Thank you, Lord Thank God. You, Thank you, Jesus. Never early, he's never late. It takes 
Amen and amen. He has the power this morning. Just trust him and see. Glory to God. Amen. There's power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. Though you, you may have come this morning with your sins as scarlet. Hallelujah. Amen. But the cleansing blood of Jesus can make it all white as snow, cleansed, washed, forgiven, and set free by the power of God through the cross, the blood of the cross this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What a great gospel. What a great salvation. What a great Savior we have this morning. What a reason to worship and rejoice in the house of God this morning. This morning we're going to worship him once again with our giving to the work of the Lord here at Crossway Ministries. It is his work. It's his church. Amen. I'm just glad that he allows me and us to be a part of what he is doing. Amen. So we're going to ask the people here to march on down and give an offering plate this morning. Those are listening by internet this morning, whether you're listening by Facebook or YouTube, let me encourage you. This is how you can give. We're passing the plate in your living room this morning. Just go over to our church website crosswayministries.org and just as soon as it opens up you'll see a donation button center page just tap on it and right there you'll be able to give easily by paypal if you're not able to do that, you can mail your gift in, mail it to Crossway Ministries, P.O. Box 9097, Greenwood, Mississippi, 38930. And no matter how you give, we're thankful for your giving this morning. We thank you so much. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, amen. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you multiply it many times over this morning to meet the need. Bless that giver this morning and bless them abundantly. And I ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus and everybody said amen and amen. Come on down and give. Amen. Let's fellowship for just a moment this morning. James was talking earlier this morning, and um, yeah, you know, Brother Wayne, he did he did a um, some teaching on that the tabernacle, you know, back. It's been a while back ago, but but there was so much to know about all those things that was going on and what people had to bring and what they you know they had to have the faith in everything that was being done and everything. Sometimes I wonder if our faith is is like that. I mean. We, there was people that was bringing in their lambs, bringing in their turtle, do turtle doves, those who had a heifer or whatever, heifer, is that how you say it? 
whatever it was, they were bringing those in. Can you imagine some people there? And I imagine it was just more than a few, but we're just going through the routine. They were bringing things in because they were told to. Mm -hmm. You know, so they were just going through the routines. You know, people, let's not ever get into routines. Routines is killing us. So, uh, spirit and soul. Yes, and we have to have a hunger for the operation of the Holy Spirit in this place. I'm telling you, Amen. when he comes down, there's going to be freedom in this place more than ever before. Amen. We won't come in as, and look at church as a drag or, or look at church as, well, let me get this over with. Let me get my two hours in or whatever, whatever it is. Let's just, you know. I, I, and sometimes, I'm look, I'll be the first one. There's times that I don't feel like it. I don't feel, you know, and, and don't, don't, <laughs> lot, you know, I don't point people out whatever, but, you know, we don't have halos on our head for sure. We all have problems, but our problems can be remedied and helped by asking the Lord, Lord, send down your spirit in, in our lives. So that's, I'm telling you, this church will flourish more than ever before spiritually and, you know, uh, the people coming in or whatever. I can't always get my words right, but let's not fall into that trap to where, well, let's bring a let's bring a turtle dove or whatever it is. Let's bring it in and offer it up to the altar, and then we can go home. Let's not do that. I mean, the kids all around here watching and seeing what everybody, all, the grown ups are doing, and if the grown ups are just putting it, you know, pushing it off like, well, it's just a thing, you know, then they're gonna know it when they grow up too. So pray for this church more than ever. I'm telling you, people. If God had to do something to the, to the disciples in, in that day, because they were so, um, what was it? They were so ingrained, ingrained with all the ceremonies and stuff that went on during that time, and he had to cause uh, the, the uh, sacrificial, the, the uh, what was it, Whether the temple. If God had to destroy the temple to tear all that down, and then also the, the disciples was, was in, when the time that the Holy Spirit was going to be poured down, they were in the upper room. They were there was times when they were scared. They was in a room and scared. They didn't want, they didn't want the Pharisees to know where they were at. But see what what happened after the Holy Spirit came? Man, they got out. They had power. It's not a it's not a it's not a book of storytelling. It's not nothing like that. The Bible is true on everything, and it can happen here if you believe. Now he was going. If things don't change. God's going to cause something to happen, and he's going to wake us up. He's going to wake us up, and it's in that time, you better be have all this stuff that you've heard over the years, all the preaching, all the teaching you heard over the years, it's going to, where the rubber meets the road, it's going come to come to fruition because you're going to remember the things that were said. Don't fall apart on it. But what we need to do, we need to ask the Lord to give us that desire like never. But you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. How can you do that with the mind that we're having now that, let's, you know, I, I can't, ex- it really hurts me, to, and I can't even put it in words, but you know what I'm saying. Let's pray for this church. Pray for the pastor and his wife. Pray for, pray for us all. We all need the moving and operation of the Spirit in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. God is
Praise the Lord. Amen. We just lift your hands and give him praise in the house of God this morning. Thankful for his presence this morning among God's people. Amen. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor in the house of God this morning. He's worthy of all the praise this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to the precious Lamb of God. Glory, glory, glory. Amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. Well, thank you so much, singers and musicians. Amen. If you, Brother Denny, can you help Sister Debbie there with the scooter? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. She got where she could get around pretty good on that thing. I think about putting her five horsepower Briggs and Stratton on it. She can really get around then. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm delighted that you saw fit to come out to the house of God, join us this morning in this great service. What makes it great is what is being preached. Amen. Hallelujah. The message of the cross. I'm thankful for those that joined us by internet today, by Facebook, YouTube, and even at a later time. We just pray that you be blessed, encouraged, and, and further equipped to be able to continue on, march on, and uh, be established in this final hour of the church age. Amen. To be able to endure. Amen, and I'm not talking, when I say that, I'm not talking about just a get-by kind of thing. I'm talking about, amen, victoriously, amen, how triumphing in him, glory to God. I'm going to um, sort of come in behind uh, some teaching that Brother James did the other day, and some of it's going to overlap this morning. It's just I could not escape uh, some particular things. We, we repeatedly uh, dealt with this over and over on the Continue for the Faith broadcast on Wednesday night, so I'm just having a hard time uh, leaving that particular place in the Second Corinthians chapter 11 and uh, verse 2. Second, Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, if you would, go ahead and find your place. While you're doing that, I'm going to make a couple of announcements real quick. Amen. Don't forget, I keep throwing this out here, amen, uh, to encourage the body of Christ. Determined camp meeting. Amen. October the 5th through the 8th is going to take place. Christ Community Church, Pastor Clint and Lindsey Bath, they're at 5625 North Loop, 256 Palestine, Texas. Amen. So we want to encourage you, and uh, I'm trying to say this every service, if I can re remember to do so, to encourage people to come out for this great camp meeting. There'll be ministers from all over the country uh, who are known for preaching the message of the cross and if they're not, we pray, God, that they'll repent and begin to, to preach nothing else then. Amen? Hallelujah. We'll gather to preach the gospel, and the gospel, as you know, is the cross. That's a determined count meeting. Amen. We're not going to change the name because a few folks don't like to be determined. Amen. Determined count meeting, October the 5th through the 8th. That's beginning on a, uh, we, a Thursday night. Beginning on a Thursday night, I'll be preaching the, the first service on Wednesday night. Amen. I'll be running through uh, Sunday, and there's four services every day uh, after that uh, Thursday night. Amen. So uh, it's going to be a blessing. Amen. Now, these services themselves will not be live streamed. However, they will be recorded, and they will be posted onto Facebook uh, and YouTube, I believe, afterwards, amen. So just look for these, those that are unable to be there, amen. But you can't drive too far for the truth. Church Alive is worth the drive, amen. So come on out, be a part of these great meetings. I know that you'll be glad that you did, amen. If you procrastinated, if you've been putting it off over the years to this year, amen, is the year to come, amen. Once again, that's Christ Community Church, Pastors Clint and Lindsay Bath, and Bass, B-A-S-S, and the address is 5625 North Loop, 256 Palestine, Texas, amen. Just thank the Lord for these folks. This is the second year that they've hosted the Determined Camp meeting in a row, and we're thankful for their labors, the, the members of the church there for hosting this, working and laboring. It takes a lot to do this. Uh, we, we've done it a couple times, I know. It takes a lot of labor, takes a lot of manpower, takes a lot of effort, amen, to, to put this on. So we're thankful for their uh, labor of love, amen. Praise, they love the Lord, they love the message of the cross, they love God's ministers that preach the cross. And then after that, amen, as soon as we return from that camp meeting, amen, October the 15th, that following uh, uh weekend, amen, we're going to have our anniversary homecoming here, 16 years as Crossway Ministers. Thank the Lord for his mercy and his grace. He's brought us mighty long way. We've seen the good, bad, and ugly. We're still here. We said our message hadn't changed. If anything, we're more determined than we ever have been, amen. So we're just going to keep marching in this great gospel, amen, with all of those that are continue to march with us, amen, and those that won't, well, uh, we're, we're going to keep... We're going to keep preaching it so you have a place to come back to. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Okay, uh, take your Bibles. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And I'm going to begin in verse 2. Amen. I'm going to move around as always. Hallelujah. And then I'm going to swing pretty quick over to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. Amen. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning in verse 2. So a lot of people hadn't heard this. Me and Brother Jonathan and Brother James, we've, we've been preaching it over and over. We've heard it over and over. Amen. And, but there's a lot of people that has not heard. Believing that the Lord continues to draw people, amen, and they need to hear this message. Glory to God. Amen. Those that are listening, get you a good King James Bible. Take notes. Judge what I teach and preach based upon the Word of God, not what you think. Amen. For the Word of the Lord is right. All of God's works are done in truth. Not what the preacher down the road says, either direction, but judge what I say based upon the Word of God. That will keep you straight. Me too. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. Paul said, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I have made, and I've circled I there to remind you that this is what the apostle Paul is saying. Amen. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Verse 3, he said, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. That's, that word means, we don't normally read it or see it in that form, but it's speaking of the subtle work of Satan, his schemes, his strategies. Amen. So it says, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. <coughs> and in verse 4, I'm going to stop there and then move over to uh, uh, verse 12, amen. And he said, for if he who comes preaching, this is the preacher that's coming, amen, or some other preacher that's coming, amen, they're not, they're not sin of the Lord, amen. They just come, they show up, and they preach, but they preach something else. For if he who comes preaching another Jesus, you know, you know what, long ago, maybe it was the last time I preached, I don't know. I dealt with this very thing. I can't recall. I just know the Lord just impressed upon me heavily if I preached it last Sunday. Uh, I don't know. We need to hear it again amen. today, Amen. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, I very seldom on a Monday, if you ask me what I preached on Sunday, I very seldom can I ever tell you, amen, it's just, it's not, you know, my, because come Monday, my mind and everything about what I'm thinking about and looking at is targeting the next message, because Sunday's gone, amen, amen, I'm looking forward to uh, Tuesday morning, Wednesday night. And Sunday morning again, amen. So if you ask me on Monday, uh, my response is, is you should have been here on Sunday. Amen. So it says there, for if he who comes preaching another Jesus, there is another. Amen. Jesus would even say this. It was written in the Gospels, the Synoptics, the Synoptic Gospel, which is Matthew, Mark, and Luke's. In all of these Gospels, he would say, that there would be many that would come in my name and they shall deceive many. And he's, in one place he said, go ye not therefore after them. Amen. Don't follow them. Amen. You, sh you should know the truth and the, the truth will make you free. And those that know the truth will know who's telling the truth. Amen. That's the reason it's so important that, we, that you become partakers of what's being preached as it pertains to the message of the cross. So the truth will become more and more embedded or more and more a part of you. The Bible speaks. We hear the, that word anointing being thrown around a lot, amen, especially in Charisma Magazine, which is junk. 
amen, but, we, but the anointing is the truth, amen, that's what the, the, the anointing is, the anointing is the truth, it's not so, it's not goosebumps and doodads and a feeling, amen, though we thank God for feelings, we do have feelings, amen, but the, the anointing is the truth, and the more truth that you know, the correct truth, the truth that God works in, the more anointing, amen, that we can possess in our walk and relationship with the Lord, with the Lord in our presentation of the gospel to other people as well, amen. And I believe that all of that comes this morning, or I know, uh, based upon our determination not to know, we turn away from everything else, and we become determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified, amen. But it has to be more than just uh, saying that that uh, that that language, amen. It has to be more than just quoting, I'm determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. It has to be more than a logo. It has to be more than a sign. It has to be just something. It has to be something more than just what we hide behind, amen. It has to include our growth and in in understanding of what took place at Calvary, amen. We grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, who he is and what he accomplished at Calvary. Anytime we use the, the word cross, we're talking about what he there did, amen, not a wooden beam. It's interesting that we have to say that, but we do. I mean, we're talking about what Jesus there did 2,000 years ago, but not just for salvation, but for, guess what, uh, Romans 8 and 32, for all things that pertains to life and godliness, amen. And we're learning these things, amen, more and more as we go, as we're walking on the path of the just, where the light of the gospel increases more and more unto that perfect day. That's what the Bible teaches, amen. But if you draw back from hearing this message and and become complacent with uh, just uh, you know just uh, just a one verse of scripture, amen, if you come com become complacent with that, you might be saved, but you're not really maturing in the capacity that the Lord would have you to be and that you certainly need to be uh, maturing in this final hour so that you can know what is right, so that you can know what, uh, what is the truth, so that you can know and identify what God is working in and know what he's saying. God's only saying one thing. God's only preaching one thing. God's only teaching one thing. God's only speaking. His testimony is all about Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's all the, the word of God is about. So why wouldn't I be determined not to know anything except what God has determined this morning, amen, to know himself? Amen. Even before the foundation of the world was the lamb slain. That's identifying with the cross and what he would there do. Did I read the rest of that verse 4? He said, for if he who comes preaching another Jesus, and you know I'm amazed when you begin to talk to people about another Jesus, they don't, well, what, do you, what are you talking about? It's not but one Jesus. The Bible says there's another Jesus. The Bible says there's more than one. There's multiple Jesus. The people all over the town have their own Jesus. It's a Jesus that they manufactured in their mind. It's a Jesus of their own making, amen. It's a Jesus most of the time that allows sin to continue in their life, amen, because that's a Jesus that most of the people desire, amen. They want to go to heaven, but they don't want to live like they're going to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But the Jesus that we embrace, the Jesus of the cross, amen, that there's a benefit that comes by faith anchored in that, and that is, excuse me, Romans 6 and 14, sin shall not have dominion over you. It no longer dominates your life. Hallelujah. Amen. You're a changed believer now, but your faith is to remain in that uh, liberating truth and not to be moved away. So why shouldn't I desire to remain determined to know nothing else but Jesus Christ and him crucified? So if he comes preaching another Jesus, Amen. And if you belittle the cross or if you if you make it slight or if you try to uh uh you know to 
to present it as being not as important as so many people and was as people make it out to be, amen, then you're actually presenting another Jesus, amen. If you're presenting the cross as being not essential or not as important, amen, as those determined people uh, make it out to be, you're actually presenting another Jesus, amen. You're actually presenting something that is an offense to God, amen, an offense to Jesus, amen, amen the one that laid his life down on Calvary's cross. I say it often, I can't imagine standing before Jesus, the one with nail-pierced hands, amen, and telling him that I needed something other than what he did at Calvary. Can you imagine that? I couldn't imagine it on Judgment Day. I can't imagine it today. It's settled within me that my hope is built on nothing less, amen, than Jesus' blood and his righteousness, amen, all of the grace is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Amen. Uh, the, the, what Jesus did at Calvary is that solid rock, that solid foundation that we can indeed find ourselves standing on. It's a sure foundation. It's a sure rock. It's unmovable. It will not be moved. It's in position. It's in place. It's not going anywhere. Amen. If anybody's going anywhere, amen, it'll be you if you depart to faith. But if you want to go on with Jesus, Jesus, stay at the fertile ground of the cross, amen. Praise God. Help me out this morning, amen. He said, for he who comes preaching another Jesus whom uh, we have not preached. So this is being tied directly to the apostle Paul's message, what he preached, not just him. He did use the word we. He's speaking of himself and he's speaking of the disciples that would follow him. Amen. And march through the Roman Empire preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. So he said anyone that uh, that preached anything else other than the cross, I mean, he said it in, what is it, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23, he said, we preach Christ crucified. Amen. Did they get that right? We preach Christ crucified. I'm determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I've been repeating this. Amen. Our faith is not in our determination. Our faith is in the cross, but we're determined to keep our faith there and not be moved away by the slight and the schemes and the strategies of the enemy, amen. You don't have to be, you don't have to fall victim to the strategies of the enemy, amen. It doesn't, it doesn't have to happen, amen. And he said, for, for if he who comes preaching another Jesus who we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, amen, it's kind of, if you stop and think there for just a moment, the moment, and he's dealing with people, amen, who began good, they began right, they began at Calvary, they began at, with the teachings of the Apostle Paul, amen. So he's saying there, you receive the right spirit in the beginning, which is the Holy Spirit, because your faith was in the right object, which is what I come preach preaching to you, amen, I come preaching it to you right, amen, in the very beginning in the beginning, and presented to you the life-changing, liberating message of Jesus Christ and him crucified, amen, he didn't come preaching humanistic psychology or some type of a, a program or something of that nature, he come preaching the power of God that resides, amen, and functions and operates from the platform of faith alone in what Jesus did it. Calvary alone, amen. So he said, if you now are operating by another spirit, amen, Paul would tell those in Galatia, said, who has bewitched you? Amen. Who has cast a spell upon you? Who has who has bewitched you that you would uh, depart from this spirit? Amen. To embrace another. Amen. There's the, uh, just like there's many other Jesuses out there. Every every false doctrine has a has a spirit in operation behind it. Amen. And that spirit is working to to try to get you to embrace that false doctrine. Amen. Hello. Amen. But the Holy Spirit is always, guess what? He's always working to get you to embrace the cross. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 11, amen, the Holy Spirit is always handing us over to, presenting us to 
death, which is speaking of the cross, that the life of Christ might manifest within us, amen. So the Holy Spirit, amen, is always going to be bringing us to, pointing us to the cross. Jesus said when he comes, amen, he's going to take of mind what I did, and he's going to show it to you. So if God the Holy Spirit is determined, God the Holy Spirit, if he is determined to always to point us to the cross, why shouldn't we? always be determined to embrace nothing but the cross which identifies with Jesus Christ who he is, what he did at Calvary do you see that? The simplicity of Christ, the simplicity of the gospel this morning this simple folks this morning is just as so many people make a mess out of it because they're trying to make it complicated they're trying to make themselves make themselves, they puff themselves up make them try to make themselves sound like they know something, they Amen. But let me tell you something this morning. It's those shallow streams that make the most noise. Amen. Amen. Get in the river. Amen. There's a river that's flowing from Calvary. Amen. It's not just a little stream. Amen. That's trickling through uh, the, the rocks this morning, but there's a river. Amen. Uh, the Lord told uh, Ezekiel, get out there and swim. Amen. Don't just go out ankle deep. But there's a river this morning. Shallow streams always make the most noise. We recognize that, and we turn from those, and we get out in the river. That river is flowing from Calvary this morning. There is a river that still flows from Calvary's cross today. Amen. That's, that's the place that I want to be found swimming. Amen. And he said there in verse 4, he said, if you receive another spirit, amen, which you have not received, the one that you received in the beginning is what he's speaking about, or another gospel. It's interesting that the, uh, the Holy Spirit used the word gospel here, but he did call it another gospel. It's another, it's being presented presented as the gospel. Jesus said that those many would come and they would present themselves as being of Christ, but they're presenting another gospel. They're presenting another Jesus, and this backed and empowered and supported and promoted by another spirit. Well, these spirits, guess what? They're, they're the spirits and powers of darkness. They're seducing spirits. Amen. Seducing spirits do exactly uh, what the, their title is referred to. Amen. They they seduce you. They move you over to something else, but they also make you feel good about your rebellion. Amen. That's what they do. They make you feel good about your wrong direction. They make you feel good about climbing fool's mountain. Amen. They make you feel good about rebellion. They make you feel good about climbing fool's mountain. Rest assured, when you climb to the peak and the top, of Fool's Mountain, there's going to be a crowd of folks there, amen, that has already fell in, that has fell, fallen into the net of deception as well, and they're going to do everything that they can to make you feel good about joining their company, amen. They're going to, well, I'm glad you finally showed up up here on Fool's Mountain. We're going to love you. We're not going to teach you. We're not going to treat you like those uh, determined cross preachers do, amen. Up here on Fool's Mountain, we just hug and kiss and love on each other. Amen. We just bounce around a beach ball and we just have a gay old time and a party up here. Amen. But it's all a fallacy. Amen. It's all make-believe. And that's where most of the church is at today. They just make-believe. And they're just pretending that what they're embracing is of God when it's really another God. It's really another gospel, another Jesus backed by another spirit, amen. But they have been deceived into thinking that what they are engaged in is right, amen. Hallelujah. The deceived don't know that they've been deceived. Hello? The deceived, if they are deceived, they don't know that they are deceived. Amen? So he said there, amen, he said, uh, which you have not accepted, amen, another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with them. Amen? It means to be partners with them. It means to be standing with them. It means to uphold uh, or to be under whatever they're presenting. Amen? It means to be with them. You might as well just bear with is with them. Amen. These false apostles, these false teachers, in other words, you're guilty, amen, by association. You're, you become just as guilty as they are if you sit and hear these things. Whatever you're listening to, <coughs> it's what you have your faith in. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. If you're listening to Mike Murdoch, amen. <laughs> if you're listening to Mike Murdoch, amen. If you're listening to Joel Osteen, if you're listening to Kenneth Copeland, if you're listening to Joyce Myers, if you're listening to any of these shysters, amen, and, and hirelings, amen, and you believe what they say or you wouldn't be listening to them, amen. Hallelujah. And that list is long nowadays. It's not just those, but that list is long today of those that are presenting something other than the exclusive message of the cross. Can somebody say amen? They might come to you with a near truth, amen, but a near truth will take you to hell just like an error will or an obvious false doctrine. Hello? You know, it's, the Bible doesn't say a near truth will make you free. The Bible says the truth will make you free. The truth is Christ in him crucified. Anything near unto that, amen, is, is just uh, it's deception. It's just like that table you got in the hallway at your house, amen. Somebody come in, oh, isn't that pretty oak? It's not oak, it's veneer. It's just it's deceiving you, making you think that it's oak or walnut or whatever, amen. It's veneer. You peel that top back and you got pressed wood <coughs> you got something guess what this man made underneath it amen but it's made but it's presented uh, resembles the the true amen but we don't have to fall victim to these schemes and strategies of the Lord amen you can know this truth and you can be equipped this morning to turn away from anything else the schemes and the strategies of the enemy if you are determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and in crucified the Holy Spirit God's grace will help us march with that determination, amen. He will equip us. He will help us, amen. If you're hungry for the truth, if you're hungry and thirsting after righteousness this morning, guess what? God will see to it, amen, that you're not deceived this morning. It's whatever you're after. But if you're living a life, uh, a life loosely, amen, well, just... You know what I'm talking about, amen. Well, I don't really know what I believe, amen. You know, I, man, one man told me one day, just walked up and said, I want you to know, amen. I'm, he said, man, he was bragging on it. I dropped a big offering in the plate today, amen. Well, I guess he was wanting a parking place with a name on it. He also told me, man, I sent an offering to here and there and all these other places and preachers, and even Kelly Copeland. I said, why in the world would you do that? And he said, I want to be sure all the bases are covered. Let me tell you something, sir. All the bases are covered at Calvary. I said all the bases were covered. Y'all wake up, amen. Your nap time's over, amen. All the bases were covered at Calvary. That, with the moment he said that, that made me realize this man has no idea, amen, what the true gospel is is about, amen. He's just trying to, uh, uh, to, like he said, to cover all bases. The bases are covered at Calvary, amen. Come to Calvary, amen, and there you will know and be able to walk in the path of the just, amen. So having said that, are y'all still with me this morning? Amen. So having said that, let me move over uh, to the next uh, same page, but across the aisle there. Amen. To 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. Let me read there for just a moment, then I'm going to get to uh, get over here to some other things. Amen. But it's all going to be about the cross this morning. I said, it's all going to be about the cross. Amen. But he said in verse 12, Brother James taught this real good the other day. Amen. I was blessed and impressed about it. I'm just coming right behind him, going to repeat a few things. He said, because there's other people out there that are needing to hear this today. Amen. And he said there, Paul said in, in verse 12, he said, but what I do, that will I do. I'm probably not going to present this as well as Brother James did. But Paul said, what I I do that I will do, amen, and when when I first read that, it, it, it just spoke to me, Paul is saying here, you know, the, the same message that we came in on that the Lord showed me in the very beginning, the message of the cross and the meaning of the new covenant, the meaning, listen to me, the meaning of the new covenant is the covenant that was cut between Jesus and God the Father at Calvary's cross, amen, the covenant, what 
wasn't made between God and us. Why? Because you're not able to be a promise keeper. Amen. <laughs> there was a group a while back they called themselves a promise keeper. I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't fall for that because I already knew that I ain't met a man yet that could keep a promise or a woman. Amen. But God is the only promise keeper and the way that he keeps his promise with God is through the man Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God is the only true promise keeper this morning. Have you got that this morning? So Paul is saying what I do, I think I'll just keep doing it. Amen. I I think I'll just keep preaching the message of the cross. I think I'll just keep glorying in the cross. Amen. I think I'll just keep lifting up Jesus Christ and Him crucified. It's been working now uh, for 20 years, and my and Sister Debbie's life will be celebrating our 16th anniversary as Crossway Ministries on October the 15th. Be sure and be here. Amen. So, uh, you know, we got much to be thankful for this morning. I have no reason to there's no thoughts in my mind this morning to even to begin to look to something else because the cross works. I remain this morning determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Don't be influenced by the powers of darkness. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't be influenced by uh, the, the, the deceivers and these influencers out here that are trying to influence you to embrace something else. Amen. But he said there, but what I do, I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may they may be found even if even as we. And if you said in verse 13, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, workers, false apostles, amen. And he, he deals with this uh, title, this term false apostles because some, in the church in, a, in, a, in Corinth and some today, it all relates to where we are today. Some have actually identified with these as being apostles from Jerusalem. Paul is saying, no, no, no. These are not apostles that God has sent. Amen. They're false apostles. And so Paul sometimes, amen, he has to just stand up with his shoulders squared, amen, and stand up and straight up, amen man and say well no they are false apostles they're not sin of God and if you go that way amen the only thing that's going to be waiting upon you is destruction amen I am the apostle he would say he said it in the introduction uh, to chapter 1 and verse 1 I'm the apostle of Jesus Christ the one that came to you according to the will of God so he's saying my message is the only message that's going to hold water there's no other boat that's going to float. Amen. Hallelujah. So there's times we see it in the Apostle Paul's ministry. People don't like that. How dare you touch God's anointed? I've already said it. Those that, 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 those that are not preaching the cross are not God's anointed. Amen. He didn't send them. God has not sent anyone to preach anything, to teach anything, to speak about anything, or to minister anything other than what Jesus Christ did at Calvary. Amen. That's the one that God sends. That one, and that's the reason so many wants us to move away from being determined to know anything else. If you're not determined to know anything but Jesus Christ and him crucified this morning, you're trying to make room for something else. You're trying to make space for something else. You're trying to sweep that over to the side so that you can now begin to know something other than what Jesus did at Calvary. Y'all alive this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah this morning. Lift your hand and give him praise in the house of God this morning. Praise the Lord. And he said that, amen, I wish I had time to, to spend a little more space on that. But he said in verse 13, he said, and I'm going to read down to verse 15, it says, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers. Amen. They're working, they're laboring, they are among you. Just as Paul said in Acts chapter 20 and verse 30, they come up among you. They they mingle among you. Uh, they, they, they are among you. That's how the enemy works. He's skillful. Amen. 
man. He he's he, he's he strated he he strategizes. Amen. Everything that he does, he he's a schemer and a, and and he works to try to enter in his disciples and his apostles in a way that you won't recognize them. Amen. But you can't recognize them if you'll be determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. God will see to it. Glory to God. Help me out this morning. And he said there, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, look, transforming themselves. What do they? It says they transform themselves. They have, tra- in, in Acts chapter 20 and verse 30, amen, they transform themselves into uh, something else. They transform themselves Hallelujah. They, they, they transformed themselves into the apostles of Christ. They're not really apostles of Christ, but they have presented themselves to be such. Amen. But if, if they presented themselves to be such, but they come preaching another message, amen, you will know then that God did not send them. Amen. And I'm not just talking about, you know, just one Sunday. Amen. I'm talking about that minister preaching the cross all the time. It's, all, it's, all, it's like that fire, that coal has touched his lips, amen. He's unable to present or to preach anything else but Christ and him crucified because that's what he's determined to know because he knows that it works. It worked in his life and it'll work in the life of anyone that will dare to believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're looking at the word of God this morning. Can somebody say Amen. Uh, it's not a Wayne Voss message. Amen. This is not a Swaggart message this morning. This is not a Larson message. This is not a Hutchison message this morning. This is the Apostle Paul's message. This is the Word of God. Come on now. Help me out a little bit. Amen. We're presenting to you what the Bible says, what the Word of God says as it's been dipped in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. They said transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Amen. They have called themselves. They have called themselves to this office. God didn't call them. God didn't send them. God didn't anoint them. They called themselves to this office, amen. They called themselves to this office, amen. Well, praise God. Why do people do that? Well, number one, I think the top of the charts this morning, amen, there's a lot of, there can be a lot of money made in in the body of Christ if you come presenting yourself as an apostle or if you come presenting yourself as a prophet, amen, and so that number one, people desire a following, they want pe- people desire for people to follow them, amen, they want they want a following, amen, so you know, they'll, they'll do whatever they need to do, they'll, they'll have somebody amen, make a false diploma a letter of, of recommendation whatever it needs, whatever necessary, amen, to get people to follow them, amen, they'll have ice cream socials, amen they'll have cake after church on Sunday, amen, I said they'll do whatever they have to do to try to create a following, amen, hallelujah, my desire this morning is that you follow Jesus, that you lay down everything else that you've taken a hold of, you deny yourself and take up the cross every day and follow him, even moment by moment, always following him by faith in what he did at Calvary, which is the only way that you can follow him, somebody say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So he said there, verse 13, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers. And, and, and look here. And I'm trying, to, I'm trying my best to help you and not hurt you this morning. Amen. I'm not trying to rub you wrong. I'm trying to rub you right. Amen. If, if you're saying this morning, well, you know, and I have people, I just don't see all of this that you're talking about at church. must be uh, exclusive to the days of the Apostle Paul. And I have to tell them, you know, well, you're blinded to uh, the things that's going on today because it's not dedicated to just the time of the Apostle Paul. Amen. It's, it's evident today. If anything, it's more evident, more obvious, and more work today than it ever has been. The reason that you have 
not, cannot see these things is because these things are spiritually discerned. And if they're spiritually discerned and you can't see it, amen, then you're part of the problem. Amen. If they're spiritually discerned, amen, that discernment comes as you place your faith in the cross and the mind of the old man is moved out of the way and now you're given the mind of Christ. Now you're able to hear, amen, what God is saying and what God is speaking and now you're able to walk, march in it and walk in it if you desire to. God doesn't force him, uh, himself, his word, his way on anyone. But if you come wanting to know the truth, amen, if you come wanting to be a partaker of his righteousness this morning, he will be sure to supply that need this morning. My prayer in the early, early days of this message when I was crying, there was just something about all of this other garbage, and now it was garbage. I see it as such, amen. I was marching through rubbish. I was walking through trash, amen. I was presenting to the people garbage, and I, the, the, you know, the Holy Spirit was dealing with me the whole time, and I'm saying, Lord, there has to be something else other than all of this that I'm seeing going on around me. There has to be something else other than man's vision for transformation. There has to be something other more to this than a purpose-driven lie. There has to be something more to this and as I would as I would cry out to God and as I would literally beg and plead for, to God, that's what I was doing. Amen. That's what I was doing because I didn't know what else to do and I was crying out to God. God showed me the truth. Reveal the truth to me. Don't don't let me be deceived. Most of the church doesn't really care, amen, who they follow. They don't really care, amen, if they're deceived or not. They try to avoid the offense of the cross because the cross is going to open your eyes and you're going to see just how deceived that the majority of the church is. We don't want to see that. Amen. We don't want to see that everything that I've been involved in all my life and all my years was actually, de actually deception. We don't want our eyes open to see that. But one day, amen, we heard the message of the cross. The cross is the answer to what you have need of and from that moment on I repented and said Lord I don't know much about it right now but I know that this is the truth and from this day forward I'm going to be determined not to know anything except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. That's the only place that God works. Until you're willing to say, I was wrong. And that's hard for a lot of people to do. That prideful man self doesn't want to say, I'm wrong. We want to be right about everything. Amen. It, but until you're willing to say, I'm wrong, I'll never, you, I, or anyone will never be able to embrace the truth. Wrong's got to be moved out so that you can embrace the truth. Amen. You sit there, verse 14, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. This means, reading from the note, he pretends to be that which he is not. Amen. Hallelujah. Satan himself does that. He pretends to be a, a, a minister of light. He pretends to be an angel of light. Jesus would have this to say. Amen. He, he said, take heed that your light be not darkness. In other words, take heed, take heed that whatever you think is the light, that it's not really darkness. Take heed today, church, that whatever you think that you're walking in that you have been convinced is light, that it's not really, that it's not really darkness, but you've been deceived to think that it's light by the deceiver. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What is the light? Well, the, Jesus said, I am the light, but it's the cross. Amen. That's the light switch that turns everything that he is on to us that makes him the gospel. Amen. It's the word of God that's been dipped in the blood of the Lamb. Without the cross and your faith in it, you cannot have the Jesus. I'm not saying that you, you know, I'm not throwing up a roadblock. It's already been put up if you reject the law of God, the law of the Spirit, amen. 
Amen. The law of faith, amen, is, is, it's just it's a dead end. That way, any other way, but the road, the, the, the path is wide open, amen, to, to the king. If you go the way that uh, the Lord has given us, I, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about something. I brought this up here. Uh, if it'll come up real quick, I don't want to spend all day, amen. Do, do you just make a note, study it out for yourself, amen. There's a fellow by the name of Absalom, amen, Second Samuel chapter 15. In verse 2, now Absalom, if, if you're reminded, uh, uh, Absalom is the son of David. But the Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 15 and 2 that Absalom rose up early and stood, listen, beside the way. He wasn't in the way, in the way that God has provided, but he stood behind, beside the way. Amen. In the way of God, the path of the just is lined with these voices. Amen. We're in the path of the just. We're walking the narrow way. But you got to understand that there's a whole covey of people all beside the way. They're shouting at you, trying to get you to come over to where they are. Amen. That are you with me this morning? They're, they're the voices that you have to, they're not of the shepherd. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. And he turns away from any the other voice, but it says Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way and called out to all those who were going up to see the king. The king was David, amen, a type of Christ, amen, but he said this to the people. He said, if I were made judge in the land and if every man would come unto me, I would, I would do him justice, amen. So you see the deception, that's what the Bible said. You see the deception there, what the deceivers said say they try to make you think that the word of God, the, the, the cross and that message is not going to profit you anything and it's not doing you justice. And the deceiver is going to say, well, if you come over here where I'm at, amen, I will do you justice. I will rule in your favor. I will treat you right. And Absalom, the Bible says, and Absalom stole the hearts of the people. And they stole the hearts of the people by deception. He stole the hearts of the people by flattery. He stole the hearts of the people by flattery. And I just and it goes on to say here, I posted this on Facebook, that there are many like this today who stand near, but they are in opposition of the truth, desiring to make disciples after themselves. Acts 20 and 30 is your reference. Amen. But you don't have to fall for it, glory to God. The cross is the one and only way to the king a narrow path, amen, yet it is the path of the just. This path is lined with many who stand beside the way that are near enough for their voices to be heard. And with good words and fair speeches, they seemingly offer to rule in the favor of man, thus making the cross and its messenger very offensive. Amen. What's the devil do? He polishes up a lie and dirties up the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Understand, you know, in the eyes of the people, Absalom was just, uh, he was simply the king's son and who put forth his hand to comfort them. Uh, it was almost like, well, you know, the king sent Absalom, amen, to comfort them and to love them and to hug them and to embrace them, amen. But it was all deception, amen. Uh, Absalom, e Absalom easily deceived the people by flattery, amen. Don't be moved away by the flattery of others, amen, into this false love and this false unity message that's captivated most of the church. Church. And what the enemy has done, they've used that, they capitalized on it to try to move people away from the offense of the cross, amen. You don't have to continue down that, uh, that rough road, amen. Come on over here to where we are and we will love you, we'll hug you, amen, we'll embrace you. Let me tell you something, you, there's no love like I have ever experienced from God the moment that I put my faith in where the love of God is shed abroad and that's the cross of Calvary. Amen. There's no other place to experience the love of God. Anything else is, once again, it's a fallacy. It's a make-believe. It's a pretending. It's just a feel-good fleshly thing. Ooh. 
All right. We shall help me a little bit better this morning. Amen. So therefore, verse 15, therefore it's no great thing if his ministers, Satan's ministers, also, everybody say also, be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. But they're ministers of Satan. They're, they're transformed as they present themselves as ministers of righteousness. But look what it says. Whose end shall be according to their work. Amen. And that end is spiritual destruction. Amen. Now I want to go back. Wow. I, want, I still got plenty. Of time. I want to go back up to where we began, where the word jealousy there is. Amen. Go just scoot back over to where we began. That word jealousy deserves just a moment of explanation. Jealousy here, jealous. The word jealous is used. Amen. He said, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. Amen. It's not a fleshly thing. Amen. Jealous here is it speaks of a watchful guardian as being aware of a rivalry. Amen. It speaks of a watchful guardian that guardian guardian that is aware of a rivalry that's going on. Amen. God purchased the, the fallen humanity back to himself through the blood of Jesus on Calvary's cross. Amen. But he's also aware of a rivalry. Amen. That the enemy Satan desires to have these back. Amen. As I've said repeatedly, Satan's already got the world. They belong to him. I don't care how morally squeaky clean they are. Amen. They can live a morally fit life, that doesn't mean that they belong to the Lord, amen, if they have not repented of their way of being of being good and clean and morally right, if they have not repented of that, they're still eating from the, 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 the good side of the tree, and unless they repent of that, amen, and embrace the cross, they will die and go to a devil's hell, and they will literally burn there, amen, in a place of darkness, the Bible says, amen, forever and ever and ever, and there's no escape there. Well, that's what I mean in a hateful God. No, it's a loving God, amen. The Bible says in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 3 in verse 17, I think it is, amen, he said, the, the, I didn't come to condemn mankind. Mankind is already condemned because of their association with the fallen father, Adam, amen. Mankind is already condemned, but God, amen, out of his love, amen, made a way through the giving of his only begotten son on Calvary's cross that we don't have to go to a devil's hell. We don't have to go there, amen, and spend eternity. God's made a way, and it is a way, it's the way, and the, that way is narrow, not to be cruel and mean, but so that it might be easily seen. Jesus said, if I be lifted up on Calvary's of his cross, I will draw all men unto me. Hallelujah. God only has one way. It's good news for those that are walking in it. It's bad news, and they try to overthrow it. But you can't overthrow it. It's good news for those that are walking in it, but it's bad news for those that are trying to embrace something else. The only those that only those that have a problem with the narrow way. And those are the ones that, that are trying to embrace something else, so they have a problem with the narrow way. Back to jealousy. They're jealous, a godly jealous. It speaks of a watchful guardian as being aware of a rivalry. Paul was certainly aware of this. He experienced it there, especially in the church in Corinth and in most all of the churches, amen, where the enemy is trying to overthrow the faith of many, amen, and it goes on today. Exodus chapter 20, write these down. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 5 says, you shall, it says, you shall not bow down yourself to them. 
Amen. And he's not speaking. Now, you look at the word, what it says. It's not just a graven image, but it goes on to say, but anything that is in heaven above, that is in the earth below. Do you see that? Amen. You shall not bow down yourself to them, not just graven images. Amen. But it says there, anything, anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. Verse 4, he said, For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Hallelujah. Amen. The jealousy of God is not like that of mankind, which has its roots in selfishness. Amen, but rather, but it's rather grounds for his people to have confidence in him and a reason to worship him, for he will not share his people with Satan. Glory to God. Amen. That, that, that makes me want to rejoice. God will not share. He's a jealous God. Amen. He paid a high price for you this morning, and he refuses to share you with you, share you with Satan. Amen. Hallelujah. But it's really, it's up to us. We have to fight the good fight of faith, continue in the faith, and be determined not to know anything but Jesus Christ and him crucified. If you will do that, amen. He is faithful. He will keep you from the schemes and the strategies of the enemy. Come on now, help me out. Do you see that this morning? Let's just stay with that a little bit further. Nahum, N-A-H-U-M, Nahum, chapter 1, verse 2. He said it there, God is, amen, God is. This is who he is. It's his person. It's wrapped up in him. God is jealous. Exodus 34 and 14, it says that one of the names of Jehovah is jealous. He is jealous, glory to God. And the, listen to what it says there in Nahum 1 and 2 it says and the Lord look revenges that means avenges amen and the Lord avenges and he says it twice the Lord revenges the Lord, which means the Lord avenges he, what does that mean it means he avenges his people from their adversaries and possesses wrath for their enemies Wow, let's don't get excited this morning that we serve a God that has said he will defend us, amen, against our adversaries. Let's don't get excited this morning that I serve a God this morning. He's not going to just turn you over to the enemy, amen. He's not going to allow the enemy to have you if, you if you'll be determined to know nothing but the avenue that God can do these things, and that's Christ and him crucified. Praise the Lord. God is jealous. And the Lord revenges. The Lord revenges. He said it twice. Hallelujah. He avenges his people from their adversaries and possesses wrath for their enemies. Boy, you, with, and you, God, I take it lightly this morning. Those that are pre presenting another Jesus that has no power to avenge. Amen. You, hello? Y'all not take that lightly this morning. To those that are presenting another Jesus that's really just nothing more than a net of deception. Amen. Let me, let me, let me help you with that just a moment. Amen. Maybe somebody will get happy this morning. I hope so. Amen. I was happy this morning. Praise God. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 18. And Paul said, and the Lord shall deliver me. The Paul said, and the Lord shall deliver me, even with great force and fury. Amen. Then the, the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Every evil work. Is that not what Nahum is saying? Amen. That Paul is saying, the Lord shall deliver me. Oh, what comfort, what rejoicing it is this morning that if I, if I cling to the cross by faith this morning, amen, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt I have confidence that my God will deliver me from the clutches of the enemy this morning. And Paul said, the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me, will preserve me 
preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So you see that behind that statement of truth, Paul couldn't help but worship the Lord and say to whom be glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. He is our, he's a jealous God and he will not allow Satan to have you if you're determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. It's a faith march this morning. Glory to God. Remember, wow. Remember old Pharaoh. Remember him? Amen. All of that was a picture of where we are today, that what we have. Exodus is coming out. Amen. That's that's a chapter, the, the book of deliverance of coming out of bondage. You y'all agree with me on that? And you remember, you know the story where Pharaoh, not just bringing all of this, you know, I made this statement in reading 2 Timothy 4 and verse 18, he does this thing with great force and fury at times, amen. He does these things swiftly. It's, it, he doesn't always refer, reserve everything for later on. But sometimes he deals with it uh, with great force and fury, Amen. To avenge those that belong to him, his children, his sons, and his daughter. What a jealous and a faithful God that we have. What a great father that we have in our great God through the blood of the Lamb this morning. But it's, it tells us, it teaches us, amen, in Exodus where Pharaoh and all of his army, all of them, however many it was, a great army. He had one of the greatest armies in the land at that time. Many horses, many soldiers, many chariots, amen. And Pharaoh, all, all the clout and the power that he had in Egypt, and Pharaoh and all his army were thrown down and destroyed, amen, for the Israelites. This right here, amen, is also, amen, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a sign, it's a, it's a, Oh, it's for us to look at and realize that the same God that dealt with these in that day and time, he's still the same God today. The only problem is our lacking of belief, amen. The only problem is we cut him short and we don't believe him to be the, the Jehovah of the old. The Jehovah of the Old Testament is the Christ of the new. And you can have everything that's wrapped up in Jesus Christ if you'll come to him through belief in what Jesus did at Calvary. The, the cross is what turns the light on. The cross is what the door hinges on. Apart from the cross, you have nothing that Jesus declared himself to be. Amen. <sighs> Amen. This is the God of love for his people. Man, it don't sound like a... Man, your God's not very loving that he, that he would just snuff out you just try, y'all just turn him into a glorified hit man. Tell you what the Bible says. Amen. Tell you what the Bible says. Amen. God destroyed Pharaoh and all of his armies. They all suck in salt water. <laughs> Amen. He destroyed all of them. Throw them down. Destroyed them all. Because they sought why? Because they sought to destroy his people. They sought to overthrow God's people, which he is jealous of. Amen. Not, <laughs> hallelujah. Numbers chapter 26. Amen. And, and listen to this. And, and, uh, not, uh, Numbers chapter 26, verse 9 through 10. Just write it down. Amen. And, and it says, And there were those who were famous. I thought that was very interesting. There were those that were famous in the congregation of Israel. It's a lot like that today. Amen. Well, they, they, those are famous. We can't touch them. God won't touch them. They're famous. Everybody bows down to them. Amen. It didn't make any difference with God uh, what type of uh, title that they've been given by the congregation. Amen. But it says that this is important. You need to see this body. Of, you need to see this church. You need to see this and understand that this 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 morning. Numbers 26, verse 9 and 10. And it says, And there were those who were famous in the congregation of Israel. 
These are for, that's the word I was looking for earlier. These are set forth as an example for us today. Amen. These are what we call uh, billboards of discernment for the church. Amen. But going back there, it says, there were those who were famous in the congregation, but it says they who strove against Moses and against Aaron. Amen. Well, these were the God's choices. This the Moses was God's deliverer. Amen. Aaron was God's high priest. Amen. These were God's appointed. They these were God's selected. These were God's ministers of that day and time. God doesn't take it lightly when you attempt to try to overthrow what he has put in place, what he has put in position, what he has anointed. Amen. Listen, if that's ever happened in your life today, ought to be a day of repentance. God, forgive me of my ignorance whether it's been times past or recently, it's time to settle that thing with the Lord. God, forgive me of my ignorance. You've done it out of ignorance. You didn't know, amen, and understand that how intense the jealousy of God is toward those that belong to him. There was a high price that was paid for God's people through the blood of Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. He has every right to be jealous over these today. So it goes on to say, amen, they strove against Moses and against Aaron and who were in the company of Korah. When they strove against the Lord, what's this deal with Korah? Real quick, amen, well, Korah, amen, was the, uh, 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 he decided within himself that he and the members of his family and his tribe were just as qualified to run the tabernacle as Moses and Aaron was. He, he had decided within himself, let me bring it down to the day. Korah of those that decide within themselves that they can do just as good a job, if not better, than the one that God has put behind the pulpit. And they strive to overthrow that person in the position that God has given. It's the same thing. The spirit and the mind of Korah. Korah, if I say that right, I think I am, amen, he, once again, he wanted or at least he wanted his family members to be the high priest. They could offer up sacrifices. They, they could offer up sacrifices just as good as Abram. They, they could do this and probably do a whole lot better job. But even if they could, which they couldn't, even if they could, they were still not God's choice for that position. Amen. Amen. Even, even if they can do a better job, Amen. These were still God's choice. Amen. Hallelujah. The reason a lot of churches split today in the camp of the cross is because somebody rises up within the ranks thinking that they can pastor better than the pastor that, uh, and I'm not just talking about here, that can, has, and will happen elsewhere. Amen. They, 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 they promote themselves, amen, to that level, amen, and they begin to think within themselves with the help of seducing spirits, amen, to Satan scheming and working, they, they begin to think within themselves, well, I can do a better job than the pastor, amen, but the thing of it is, God is the one that put that pastor behind that pulpit, amen, until God takes him out, there's no place for you. Hallelujah. So when they learn that, amen, what do they do? They go off and they start another church and they, they start another church and another following so that they can be pastors. Amen. There's churches all over the country right now that are like that. Amen. Somebody, you know, uh, you know that the, the pastor, the one that God gave us, Man, he stutters a lot. He mispronounces a lot of words. Amen. He just, you know, and he just, my goodness gracious, you'd think that the God of glory, amen, would be able to give us somebody better than that. 
right? So what do they do? Amen. They get everybody in a huddle and they start tearing this man down because, amen, they start tearing him down and building themselves up. Man, that is so evil. That is so wicked and so evil. And if you think God is just going to brush it off, amen, in his time, he will deal with it. Amen, in his time, he will deal with it. Glory to God. Amen, and so it says there, amen, speaking of those who were in the company also of Korah, now look what it says, when they also strove against the Lord, amen, they, have, they may have been famous in the congregation, but they tried to usurp authority over the Lord in his way, and they lost their lives in the process. Boy, we're talking about the jealousy of God here, right? Amen. How he's not going to share us, amen, with Satan, his schemes and strategies. Amen. And, and if you, and look what it says there. Verse 10, this is what happened to these that were famous in the congregation. This is what happened, amen, to, to all of, every bit, if you really, really research it, amen, the, 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 the tribe, the, the group, the family of Korah, and all of those, they, they were sucked into this pit, amen, their houses, their children, their animals, and God just totally done away with that group of people. Their houses and everything that they own would just shut down into the pit. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. Bible preacher this morning, whether you like it or not. Amen. Verse 10, it says, look what it says. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah and fire devoured to 200, well, I'm, I'm, 200, it says 250 men, and they, 250 all at once. Sucked down into the earth, amen. And it says, look what it says at the end there. And it says, and they became a sign. What took place that day became a sign. What took place that day became a sign. In other words, and I've already used this phrase once, it became a billboard of discernment for the body of Christ, amen, that for us to be reminded again today that God has one way, and it's Jesus Christ and Him crucified, and those that fight against the, being determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified are doing that because they're determined to embrace something else, amen. It's not to the direction that you want to go in today. Amen. It's time to repent of that direction and come back to Calvary's cross. And I may not, but I might be. I don't know. I may not be speak, speaking to the church family here today, but I'm speaking to somebody because God doesn't give me a word, amen, to just go out into never, never land. His word, if it's his word, will not come back void, but it will go forth and will accomplish what it is sent out to accomplish. Boy, Pharaoh and all his army was drowned in the sea and Israel crossed over on dry ground. God made a way. Amen. That speaks of Colossians 2.15 and having spoiled principalities and powers, overthrew, destroy, over, overthrew all of those powers and principalities, triumphing over them that day. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. That's what happened at the, at the Red Sea that day, amen. All of Pharaoh, could you imagine that these other nations up on the mountain, amen, looking down and, and watching these things and realizing, oh God, the, the God of Israel is a jealous God. He's a great God. He's a wonderful God. He, he's a mighty God. These things were done as a sign, a billboard of discernment for those that are marching in God's way. Amen. 
So Israel crossed over on dry ground. God made a way for them. Some three million Israelites, they say. Amen. We think, wow, you believe that? I sure do. I sure do. Just as much as I believe that Jesus died on that Calv- on Calvary's cross, that I might be set free, delivered, and come and, and, and have a great victory today through faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Through faith in what Jesus there did. Amen. And then if that's not enough, in Exodus chapter 16 and verse 13, it says, And God sent manna. God sent manna. Amen. That's the bread, the bread that the Lord has given. Amen. The bread that the Lord has given, which is a type of Christ. He said, I am the bread. He came down for heaven that we might be filled, that we might find nourishment, that we might graze in a pasture of plenty today. God sent manna, and this manna was so precious. If you look at look at verse thirteen there, that when God allowed this manna to come down, it would rest on the morning dew. It would lay upon the morning dew because this this manna was so precious, Amen. That it was not meant to touch the earth. Hallelujah. That means that this matter that came down was not of man. It was not of this world. Amen. In the same respect, Jesus, the bread of life that came down, all of that pointed to him when he came down. Amen. He was the God man. He was not of this world. Hallelujah. I said he came down from glory. Hallelujah. He's not of this world. God, he did not of man. Hallelujah. And this message is not of man. Amen. And just to bring a little bit more light on it, the commentary says, when you think about it, three million Israelites delivered out of out of Egypt, crossed the Red Sea, dry ground. And there was the Bible says there wasn't a feeble one among them. Hallelujah. No one was left behind. Hallelujah. It took it says, the commentary says, it took over 13, now think about this, it took over 13 million pounds of this manna to daily to supply the needs of 3 million Israelites. Think about that. 13 million pounds daily that God sent down And you wonder why I'm determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And God did that for some 40 years. At least that's what the note says. Amen. Over and over and over again. God did the impossible and supplied for His people. Yes. I'm determined not to know anything this morning save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And if that's not enough, listen again. And I love this, Exodus 17 and 6. God says, Behold, I will stand before you there upon the rock in Horeb, and you shall smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did in the sight of the elders of Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. It was done openly. It wasn't done in a quarter. It wasn't done hit off somewhere in the back room. It was done openly. Everything that God did, he did it wide open for a sign. Amen. For everyone to see and for everyone to know, glory to God. There is no such thing as a secret agent Christianity. Everything God does, he does it wide open, amen. Hallelujah, for the entirety of the world to see, glory to God. And then in 1 Corinthians 10, 4, Paul said, reiterating what he said there, 1 Corinthians 10, 4, he said that's spiritual, call it the spiritual rock. Because there was one rock in, in Horeb, and it was that rock of Horeb. God gave it that title. Many rocks around there, but God had one picked out. Amen. It's a type of Christ and Him crucified. But Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10 and 4, said that spiritual rock followed them. 
Okay, now hold on to that statement for just a minute. I, I'm going to get there, okay? Paul said that rock followed them. Now let's go over, hang on to that statement because some are being made into believers this morning and some people are scratching their head. Well, I'm just not sure. My faith is being solidified more and more and more that the cross is the gospel, that God works in nothing else because everything that I just said is a type of Christ in him crucified. It's a picture. It's a foreshadow. It speaks of what Jesus did at Calvary. At Calvary, he became the bread that came down. At Calvary, he became the living water. At Calvary, he became our deliverer. At Calvary, he overthrew powers and principalities. At Calvary, we are saved. At Calvary, we are delivered. At Calvary, glory to God. Then it says, and I'm abbreviating what it says there. You, give, you study these things out for yourself. Exodus 13 and 22, it says, He took not away the pillar of the cloud. I'm going to tie all this together in just a moment. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Likewise, in addition to that, and I still haven't got to where I want, I want to go so badly real quick. Likewise, the Holy Spirit is leading us both day and night. Likewise, the Holy Spirit is leading us both day and night and he is always leading us to the cross. That is 2 Corinthians 4, 11 again. For we which live always delivered unto death, speaking of the cross, for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Now here we go. I've got 10 minutes. I'm going to put it in third gear. Amen. Now, to your list there, write down Exodus 25 and 10. And Lord, the Lord gave Moses and his craftsmen instructions, and they shall make an ark, which is the ark of the covenant. And it speaks of the covenant that's made between Christ and the Father. That ark... speaks of Christ. Amen. Now, if you've been able to retain some of those last statements, man, I'm trying to present to you this great, jealous God that we have, this greatness. You've been able to retain some of the things, and I really gave you abbreviated for, for description there, abbreviated list. But the art that I just mentioned, amen, Brother Dennis sang about it this morning. That ark was what was in the holy of holies of the church in the wilderness, the tabernacle that God gave Moses the instructions to build. The ark is a type of Christ. And I'm just, I'm just going by memory here, but that ark, just for a moment, it speaks of Jesus. That ark was made out of an indestructible type of wood which speaks of the humanity of Christ. It speaks of, uh, of his inability to ever... Uh, he, he, he died on the cross, but he was raised again on the third day. Amen. But that ark, amen, it was, so, it was shaped like a box. And I mean, one, one writer said, well, it was shaped like a coffin, and I can, I can, I can deal with that a little bit too. Amen. In just a moment. But it, it speaks of Jesus Christ. It was made the, the, the ark was made out of wood, but it was overlaid with pure gold. And this ark, which once again, don't get it out of your mind, it speaks of Jesus Christ. What he did at Calvary, amen. We have this treasure in earthen vessels within us. Amen. But the lid of that ark was made out of a, a, of a sheet of pure gold, solid gold, through and through. And it was called the, the mercy seat. 
and this is where the high priest would go through. Uh, he would, he would take the, the blood from the sacrifice on the brazen altar. He would go through the holy place and he would go into the holy of holies and he would apply the blood of that lamb to that ark of the covenant in the most holy place or the holy of holies. Both terms is right, amen. So it speaks of Christ and him crucified. You cannot escape that, amen. Hallelujah. And on this ark, why was it called a mercy seat? Because Jesus now is mercy seated. He sat down at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If he stands up, he's standing up in judgment. Amen. But with our faith in the cross, he's mercy seated. But he's only mercy seated because of the blood that he shed at Calvary. You don't want to remove that mercy seat. Because within that ark, there was, three, there was three items in that ark. There was a, a jar of manna, amen, which spoke of what we just read about, that manna that came down. It was a jar of manna. There was Aaron's rod that budded, amen, and there was uh, uh, the, the, the tablets of stone, amen, the Ten Commandments. Because if you remove that cover which could be removed but if you remove that cover that speaks about mercy amen the thing that's going to be exposed amen is the law and you can't live by the law that's the reason this is enclosed in Christ Jesus kept the law fully and complete on our behalf he's our representative man he kept the law amen therefore we don't have a penalty of death hanging over our head today amen we have it's not a penalty Amen. But we have this triumphant life that we're living on a daily basis. Amen. Victorious. Glory to God. That's just not even half of it. Amen. And it, Aaron's rod that budded was in that ark. Amen. Remember, Korah, they were the ones that uh, uh, they wanted to overthrow. Moses and Aaron, they wanted to be high priests. God said, well, you lay, you let them lay their rod down. Everybody had a rod because it was a type of God's word, amen, the God's word, amen. But everybody would have a staff, a shepherd's hook, a staff, a rod. Let them lay theirs down, which represented their tribe. Let Aaron lay his down, and the one that budded, amen, that's my high priest. Well, lo and behold, amen, before all of these were sucked down into the pit, amen, guess what? Aaron's rod budded, amen, and it's in that ark that reminds us, that, that reminds us not about Aaron's high priest ministry, but the one that he represents Jesus is our high priest, amen, and he comes in not with the blood of bulls and goats repeatedly, amen, but he laid his life down and shed his blood once on Calvary's cross, and he did it once and for all. Amen. See, all of that is representative of what we have today, amen. Glory to God. And in the jar of manna, Jesus is our heavenly manna today. We don't have to go out and pick it up like they do. We receive it by faith in what Jesus did at Calvary where the bread is broken and dispersed. This ark would have four golden rings on it, one on each corner. They'd be solid gold on the corner of the ark, four, one on each corner. This ark would actually be shaped like a, a coffin, so to speak. And it was handled much like that. But these rings, they, they were, it's, it's, it's representative, solid gold. It's representative of the never-ending love of God. How precious that is. Amen. The God that's jealous over us today because we embrace what he gave us to be brought into the household and family of God. Four golden rings, the love of God. It also identifies that this is the love. This is the message that's to go out to the four corners of the earth. Amen. Christ and Him crucified because this is where the love of God is shipped forth. Staves. There were staves that were put through these rings. When I say that, do y'all understand what I'm saying? There were staves that were put through these rings, one on each side. And the ark was to be carried upon the shoulders of the Levites. Amen. The, 
The Levites were those, remember, when Moses come down off the, the mountain with the tabernacle and they, were, had, they, uh, they built them a golden calf there. And thank God that Abram repented from all of that stupidity. Amen. Amen. But when God said, when Moses said, everyone that's with the Lord come over on this side, amen, it was the Levites that went over on the Lord's side. So God has used them, amen, to, to, be, to be ordained to handle the sacrifice. Okay. This ark was to be carried by these staves and it was to be placed on the shoulders of these Levites and that's how the ark was to be carried. Now if you can envision that in your mind, that's a picture of Christ being lifted up on the cross. Amen. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Now this, this picture is going to Explain all of that if you'll stay with me. Amen. Do you see that? It's a picture of Christ crucified. Amen. Even in Exodus, way back yonder. Amen. So now I want you to see the whole picture of what's going on here. Remember when David made the new ark? The, 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 excuse me, the new ark. The, the new cart to bring the ark into Jerusalem on? And the reason he fell and, and the man died is because he made that ark. And then he, after the man died, Uzziah, I think is his name, Uzzah, Uzziah. But the uh, only thing that's going to come out of doing it your way is death. But after David searched the word of God and realized that the ark had the only way that God would allow that ark to be touched and handled and moved without, uh, without death happening is for it to be placed upon the shoulders of the Levites. God hadn't changed his mind about that way of handling Christ, the, the ark which represented Christ and him crucified. God has not changed his mind today. That's the reason after 20 years I'm still determined not to know anything save Jesus Christ. And him crucified. Amen. Now, here we go. I read it when the Bible speaks about, remember that pillar of a cloudy pillar by day and a cloudy, and excuse me, a pillar of fire by night, a pillar of fire by night, a cloudy pillar by day. That, that pillar was actually rising up right above that ark because it speaks about the power and the presence of God. Apart from Christ and Him crucified, you cannot experience the power and the presence of God. Everything else is just imagine. It's make-believe. It's pretending. Okay, whether you like it or not. Everything else is make-believe. It's pretending. It's imagination. Religion has convinced you that that felt good and it may you may have thought it felt good God works in truth and not your feelings <sighs> so here we are now I want you to get this picture here's three million Israelites marching through the desert God just overthrew Pharaoh all of his army in the Red Sea, every one of these Israelites crossed over on dry ground. That water closed up on them and destroyed them. Killed them all. This is the, this is the God of love, too. God is love. Isn't that something? This is the God of love. He's also a God of truth. and refuses to work in any other way. There you find his love through the death of his son. So, now here we have three million Israelites marching through the wilderness, and the, the, the Levites are out in front. The cross is always out in front, and we can't be led. God desires that by his spirit, through faith in the cross, you know, he, he, he leads us. He has to always be out in front. But I hope y'all not being distracted by other things. So here's these Levites carrying this ark on their shoulder. They're out in front, and the whole time, even during their traveling, 
Amen. There's this pillar of fire above that ark at night and a cloudy pillar during the day. Even in their traveling. They were up Colossians 2 and 6. As you have therefore seen Christ Jesus, so walk in him. Amen. God will work as we take up the cross daily. Now, so here's the, and, and rest assured, these Levites had, the, had that white priestly garment on which speaks of the holinesses of the Lord. Righteous is he. Hallelujah. You rest assured they wasn't marching in skinny jeans and muscle shirts. So now here we have all of these three million Israelites. You got the 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 the, the Levites holding this ark. You got a pillar of fire by day, a pillar by fire by night, and a cloudy pillar by day. Amen. And here they are marching. And the Bible says that that ark in their in their time of travel, Amen. It would be veiled with a badger skin, which speaks of uh, you know the humanity of Christ. It speaks of uh, there's nothing really within the humanity of Christ that is that appealing, Amen. But it's when He died on the cross He becomes altogether beautiful, amen. It's because of what he did at Calvary, he becomes the lily of the valley. It's because of what he did at the cross, amen, that he becomes the fairest of 10,000. So it's covered with a veil, amen. And then over that veil, there's, a, there's another covering, a cloth of blue that speaks of, once again, the humanity part, amen, is veiled over by the blue, which speaks that this all came from heaven. It's all about God. God sent Jesus. I said, it's all about heaven. Our help comes from above. <laughs> well, what a picture. You'd be one of those people... I, I, I just got a feeling it was just no telling how many people perched up on the mountains watching all of this take place. Here's, here's Moses, here's Aaron, the ark out front on the shoulders of the Levites. There's a, there's a, and during the daytime, there's a cloudy pillar, just a huge presence of God over that ark. And then they look back by, now don't forget now, Paul said this rock followed them. So you got Levites in white robes carrying an ark on the shoulder. There's a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night as they travel. Three million Israelites, manna every day raining down from heaven, they, and it's resting on the dew of the morning, the morning dew. They just go out and pick it up, Amen. And in and back in back here in the back, we look back there and there's that rock that's following them. And somebody said, Do you really believe that? I believe that just as much as I believe that cloudy pillar. Amen. Was hovering over that ark during the day, or and that the fire for that fiery pillar was hovering over that ark during the night. Yes, if you if you if you if you want me to believe that, I can believe that. Because everywhere that these three million Israelites went, not only did they need the power and the presence of God to keep away the enemy, and ain't nobody going to attack that. <laughs> ain't nobody going to approach that. And this is that God that's jealous for all of those three million Israelites when they came out by the blood of the Lamb, remember? Amen. And there's that rock that's following them everywhere it goes. And it's still gushing out water. Hallelujah. To satisfy the need of three million Israelites every single day. Manna came down. They were supplied with, there's that rock. Amen. Jesus, the word of God says that wherever you go, amen, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I will not leave you alone. I won't let you go. I'm jealous of 
over you. I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy. Hallelujah. I desire to present you as a chaste and a pure virgin. Glory to God. If you'll stay with me, I'll stay with you through the thick and thin. I will not leave you. Glory to God. I'm talking about a great and a mighty God that we serve today. He's the same God. He's the same Jehovah. The only thing that's changed is the attitude in the mind of the church today. Come back to Calvary. Come back to the cross. Repent of everything that you've ever embraced. Repent of the direction that you're going and came by, come back to the power of God that your faith will not stand in the things of this world but in the power of God. And I could go on and on and on. Hallelujah. This real, folks. Why wouldn't I be determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified? The only hindrance is lack of belief this morning. The only hindrance is lack of belief, and that's what the enemy desires to cause you to do, is to no longer believe that the Word of God is right as it pertains to God's only way, that he's changed his mind, that he's offering something new in this day and time. Don't fall for it, amen. The cross is still God's only way. Sister Debbie, Brother Denny, y'all come up, Sister Wendy. We're going to open up the altar. I've run out of time and space. As always, got so much more. Pray to God that you've been blessed and encouraged this morning. Amen. If you if you would, let's just everybody make our way down to this old-fashioned altar this morning. Let's take everything to the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's make it right with him this morning. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to the precious Lamb of God. Amen. Today... It's a great day to start believing in our great God. Today is a great day to be determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified again. Today is a great day. I believe the word of the Lord is right, just like the psalmist said. Amen. Psalms 33 and 4, for the word of the Lord is right. And all of God's works are done in truth this morning. God's working when He finds faith in the right place. Amen. Be sure your faith is in the right place this morning. Glory to God. Father, we love you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to the precious Lamb of God. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Just whatever y'all want to sing this morning. Amen. Just lift your hands. And give him praise this morning. Lift your hands and give him glory. Lift your hands this morning and praise our great and mighty God. He's worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to the precious Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Lord, have your way. Man of God, this morning, Lord, just bless him. This morning like you never have before, Lord. Just open his heart and his mind, Lord, for more of you. More of you today, oh God. Let it be done. Touch him and bless him, Lord God. Strengthen him for the days ahead. Let there be healing, God. There be a greater revelation of who you are, what you did at Calvary, Lord.
He's the Lord God that healeth thee this morning. Whatever you have need of this morning, physically, mentally, or spiritually, he came to heal this morning. Make everything right. Oh, hallelujah. Why shouldn't I be determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified this morning? And every day, let us be found glory in this cross and this great gospel. Glory to the Lamb of God. I pray you've been blessed and encouraged this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. How about just turning around, fellowshipping for just a moment, hug somebody. Amen. Be back with me Tuesday morning, if at all possible. Be going out live on Facebook, 9 o'clock, the Tuesday morning trumpet. Amen. Try to join me then. I know the Lord's got a, a word. He's going to speak to us again. Amen. God bless you. Love you, each and every one. See you then. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.